What's going on guys, this is your boy Chili, and today I wanted to show you uh, an Iron Banner gameplay clip from this last Iron Banner that we just had last week. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about like a, a theory slash conjecture um, piece about where Bungie's going to go with the Taken King for the next, you know, 11 months, 10 months until Destiny 2 comes out. And um, a lot of people, if you if you notice, a lot of people are really curious about what the big news will be in December. So obviously we know that challenge mode is coming. The last three calcified fragments will be in the, the hard mode uh, raid challenges. Some of the new titles and emblems and stuff will be in there. And that's all fine and dandy, but a lot of people are coming to the point where they're they're questioning whether or not it's, it's reasonable to keep playing Destiny um, for the next few months because there's so many good games coming out. Like I can tell you right now here, let me grab these real quick. I went out for Black Friday today and at GameStop they had to deal with the two Assassin's Creed. So I got Unity and uh, right there you can see Unity and Syndicate and I got them for 60 bucks. So I got two games for the price of one because I haven't played uh, Creed since Black Ops or since uh, Black Flag, not Black Ops. And uh, I also got Fallout 4 because that's a really amazing game. I love Fallout 3 and I bought the DLC so I'll probably be playing that soon. But the point is, anybody who's played Destiny Hardcore for the past year for whatever reason, maybe transferring over from Call of Duty, lack of exciting games that can keep your interest, or maybe it just took over how you play and you went from there, um, a lot of people are not really phased right now. A lot of people have done the quests on all their characters, they got three touch analysis, they got three chaperones, three no time to explains, they did all that, and there's really nothing else to do besides doing the raids every week, doing trials, getting your gear to the max level possible, um, and, and then really not playing. So. What I thought from a marketing standpoint, from a content standpoint, is that it would not be reasonable or logical for Bungie in particular to really focus on putting out brand new content for The Taken King when their next big focus needs to be Destiny 2. Now obviously Destiny 2 uh, is scheduled to come out next year and looking at the schedule for The Taken King, like we don't know about any new raids, we know that we're going to be paying for microtransactions, the little micro DLCs like the Refer a Friend quest, things like that, like all that's fine and dandy but that's not going to be um, long term what Pl what players and fans are looking for because I saw something recently where it was like a destiny players average between two to four hours of gameplay a day Now that's a lot of time to spend on here um, There's still stuff for you to do there's still stuff for you to get like the exotic faction items for each character um, But all that in the end of the day is considered maintenance work like you can get on and you can do the raids uh, once a week and you can do trials on the weekend and then you're kind of done it gives you time to focus on other games like black ops battlefront fallout 4 bloodborne just had dlc come out i mean a lot of these other studios have a lot of content coming out and they got me thinking that from a from a marketing and a content standpoint and this was a point i was trying to make is that they should release one new raid in the taken king it doesn't have to be huge it doesn't have to be expansive release one new raid maybe in the start of the second quarter of 2016 that'll give you something like four or five months to play that till september october when they release destiny 2 but what they should do is they should re-release the the vault of glass as well as the dark below and i, I really do believe they're going to do that because data mining way back when showed that they uh, for sure for the the dark below they had two sets of raid gear one for hard mode one for normal mode and they never released the hard mode gear so for the first time ever we saw with uh, the king's fall we saw the harrowed gear which uh, besides changing the color and obviously it's it's level um, it wasn't that different. I think each class item had like a different name, but other than that, it wasn't too different. So if they did that with the Dark Below as well as the Vault of Glass, the, all these people who are buying uh, the Taken King and the Destiny, you know, Year One, all that stuff right now, they're going to have a reason to go back and play that. Um, I don't think from a developing standpoint, it's really that hard to go back and tweak Atheon to drop at Taken King levels and drop an extra set of raid gear or raid weapons. Um, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, but that's where I really think that they should go because in terms of an actual producing content, it gives the people who played in year one a chance to replay it if they so choose to get year two uh, or, or Taken King grade year one vault of glass raid gear and armor. And it gives the people who are just coming in now a real chance to experience what we experience in year one because as of right now, you're just asking people to play catch up. Like especially with the refer a friend quest, you're basically saying, yeah, buy the Taken King brand new. You're going to get all the year one stuff, but you're not really going to get to enjoy any of the raids or the prison of elders. And that just doesn't make sense from a customer standpoint. Like I'm not going to buy a game if the entire year one content is obsolete. It doesn't make sense. So I think that's the direction that they're heading. I think in December they're going to announce something like we're going to be dropping a new raid or not a new raid, but uh, the vault of glass say in January, we're going to drop the dark below in like March or April gives you a couple months to play each of them and then they're going to drop the big 
Taking King raid, something that takes us into to Destiny 2 from a storyline point of view. Um, it takes us into Destiny 2 sometime in like June or July. That gives you two whole months to run it. One month for normal, one month for hard. Um, that gives you the time to really go, okay, it makes me get excited for Destiny 2 again. Because this this style of just re-releasing content will, will tide most of us over or let us play other games without having to constantly put pressure on Bungie. When you look at some of the biggest titles like Halo, like the Call of Duties, even like Ubisoft has become, or Rockstar has become with Grand Theft Auto, if we ask them to crank out a new title every year, the quality would go really far down. That was a problem with Modern Warfare, that was a problem with Halo. You were, you were watering down the product every year, and I don't want them to do that with Destiny. I don't care if it's not a 10-year project, I don't care, but I do want Destiny 2 to be of, of quality. I want it to improve upon the story mode. I want the PvP mechanics to be a little bit more sound because it's a good game now. It can be a great game or a fantastic game, whatever you want to call it. it. It's a great game now, but it could be better. There can be improvements. So I don't want them to rush and to, to try to listen to the demands of these people. Like, go play their games. That's fine. But don't sacrifice the quality of what Destiny 2 can be from a storyline and a PvP point of view. Like, get, bring in competitive lobbies. Do all that to make the experience better off. And I think that's what they're going to announce. You know, maybe introducing new quests, obviously drop exotics. Maybe dropping in a couple of new exotics from, from here on out. Or re-releasing uh, year one exotics. So if you go to the, the Bungie.net and then look at the armory, almost all the year one exotics have re been re-rolled for the Taken King. Minus like Galahorn, Thorn, Icebreaker, the Vex Mythal class, and the Necrochasm. Like those are five off the top of my head that I can think that won't re-release. But... That's kind of the main point of the video. I know that the, the game's coming to a close here soon. It was a close game, but I did pretty well. But I just wanted to see where you guys stood on a standpoint of, like, I want to be able to play Fallout 4, Black Ops 3, all those games without having to worry about doing a bunch of new stuff on Destiny that isn't really worth it. So re-releasing re re the raids just kind of gives you maintenance work to keep up. Um, it gives you new stuff to kind of do. It gets to show the, the, the people just coming in now what year one was all about, and it gets us all hyped for year two. So... With that being said, that's going to be the end of the video. Obviously, the game is over, so let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know if you guys agree. Maybe you guys see it going a different way. I'd love to get everyone's thoughts and opinions on this. Um, that's kind of where I want to see what Bungie will do because they, they listen to this feedback and they see what we're talking about. So, uh, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave me with a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do a bunch of do different Destiny and Call of Duty stuff. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you guys had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And you guys stay focused, stay humble, stay driven. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.